Oh, Gregulator. Gregulator, thanks for the call, buddy. Thanks for doing the Frankie Teardrop Challenge. Uh, thank you. Good guy. Good guy. You know who else is a good guy? John Hodgman. What? Yes. Uh, is this me? It is you. Oh. You're on the air. I'm I'm on the air. Yeah, we do it like that. I was just I was just sitting at home, mm -hmm. planning to call. Yes. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. I'm surrounded by starlight. Okay. And then I materialized here in the studio. Did it spin around you? Yeah. Star like, Trek into darkness style. Yeah. 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 They had to change they had to change that up. I could watch them teleport people all day long. That effect? No, apparently you can't teleport anywhere in the Star Trek universe. Can't get them up, can't get them down. Got to fly a shuttle. What? I'm just, there was a lot of, look, I enjoyed Star Trek Into Darkness quite yeah, a bit. me too. There was a lot of like, eh, we can't teleport them this time. There's too much blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Therefore, you know, we can't get, we can't get Spock out of the volcano. Yeah. Well, he didn't want to get teleported out because it messed with the prime directive. That's right. Right? That's right. Look, this is my thing. I like the Star Trek Into Darkness. These are my problems with it. They would like they go to a bar and there's like bad blues music. Yeah, in the future. What? It's a retro bar. <laughs> future blues. Future blues. And then they also played um, Beastie Boys. Beastie Boys. Yeah. That's and well, you know that's timeless. But that's the equivalent. Actually, to be fair, that is the equivalent in these Star Trek things when they would be like, "I'm a fan of Gilbert and Sullivan," like stuff that's public domain. Everyone, or... everyone in the twenty. Third and twenty fourth yeah. centuries. Only like stuff. Both TOS and TNG love the twentieth century. Early twentieth so, century. Er, like, right. Or early like yeah. Very early. Public do Sherlock Holmes. Early enough that you could say right. it's free and clear. Yeah, public domain. For say a TV show in the late twentieth century. Well, to you use. know, Bones, I'm quite an aficionado of public domain. Intellectual property from the early 20th century. <laughs> Just, uh, Alan like, Quartermain. I am the very model of a... Blah, 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 blah. Anything that would be in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is the stuff that I like. Yeah, that's, that's the stuff they like. So to be fair, these dudes were just continuing it now, and the Beastie Boys are... If Star Trek... We can't ever hear anything from the 400 years that took place after... Now, where no. we are, right. and where they are. Right. The, we never get a taste of any culture that no, happened. Nothing, nothing was invented. Look, at least George Lucas dropped a lapty neck on our heads in the cantina in, in uh, Return of the Jedi. Right. Remember that song, Lapty Neck? <laughs> Is that the name of the song yeah, in the yeah. cantina? Yeah. Am I... Bar, 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 bar. That's no, it? No, no, that's the Cantina theme. That's the Cantina song. Lopty Neck is from the from Return of the Jedi. The oh, one from is Return like, of the Jedi. Ran right. out of do Remember when that woman was like screaming some ba, song? Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, that's yeah. called Lopty Neck. That's called Lopty Neck? Yes. It's basically it. just a blues jam. Listen to it. Lopty Neck. i got to type in Lopty. Is this from the special edition or from the reg? Reg. Because they redid the song for the spesh. Did they? Yeah. That's from the new one. Wait, no, this. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. George Lucas. That's just insane. that's just basically a, a blues jam, a, a disco blues jam. He's nuts, George Lucas, right? Like a crazy guy. Let's have a song called Lopty Neck. A lot of people did not like the Phantom Menace, but I have to say that you can you have to admire it because it is the pure emanation, the unfettered mm -hmm. emanation of a deranged mind. Like no one was saying no to him and that's what came out. That's yeah. why that's why we need editors and and producers and and you know creative friction makers. But isn't the that the best in thing in a way that the guy made a movie that was the same guy who made the thing everybody loved? made the thing that everybody hated isn't there something poetic it's, about that it's chilling it's <laughs> chi it's chilling like, to the soul yeah it was an it was a deep soul lesson in creative evolution in immortality yeah. in aging and in the danger of getting what you want yeah you guys love my brain right yeah is what he said yeah get ready it all can this is straight out of my brain i saw something speaking it was chilling and i'm sorry to get Directly into the nerd stuff. Please. 
but on the on the internet, well, you know, Disney owns Star Wars now, mm-hmm. and they are not hesitating to take advantage of that. And they released a playset, a Sarlacc battle playset with Disney characters as as the Star Wars characters. Okay, so you would have Mickey Mouse would be Luke Skywalker. Correct. Okay. And Donald Duck was is Han Solo, okay. and Minnie Mouse, Princess Leia, mm-hmm. and you know who's Boba Fett? Goofy. No, Goofy's Chewbacca. Pluto. B- Boba Fett is Bad Pete. What's that? <laughs> One of the more minor Disney characters. They're all minor to me. Bad Bad Pete was is sort of this ruffian Bluto type character, but mm-hmm. he's one of those I'm, nondescript. Yeah, you know, like a, with a big jutting chin and one and one snaggletooth sticking up, and, uh, and he's one of those nondescript non animals that five they used o'clock to be. shadow. Yeah, exactly. Right. You, you know the guy. Yeah, Seagar. Yeah, a Seagar. C- <laughs> Little cigar out of the corner of his mouth from that time. From that time in animation, when most people just went around grumbling all the time. Yeah, yeah. bad Pete. Bad Pete. Ugh. At some point, is the money worth it? It's just money, guys. Yeah, it's you, worth it. You can't take it with you. What if these guys figured out a way that you can? Wouldn't that be the ultimate invention? A way to take money with you into the into the next dimension. The next, yeah, yeah. The next round, yeah. Right? Maybe that's what we should be inventing. But you know what? We just lie. What right? Do you mean? We just straight. We're just con men. We just rip you off. Yeah. Hey, where's my money? We have a. We have a. We have developed a technology <laughs> to yes. send to send your money into the yeah. afterlife. Yeah. So it'll be waiting for it'll you. It'll be waiting for you. And then all of a sudden, you're like, okay, here we go. I'm going to be rich twice. Here we go. Here we go. Bling. Starlight surrounds you, circles you. Yeah. Yep. Here I am you. in the afterlife. You. Scrub that toilet. <laughs> it's a, it's a go- I'm rich. <laughs> oh, let's see your money. It's right here. Hey, where is it? <laughs> it's Bad Pete or a Gamorrean guard or both. You know what I'm, you know what I'm really into? What's that? I'm into the 16th century. You are? Yeah, just like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what it would be like. That's what the Star Trek thing is like. It's like, what's 21 minus 400? <laughs> 17? <laughs> right, so, right, so the 17th century. Uh-huh. I'm really into, this, into the culture of the 1600s. Uh-huh. We all are. Yeah. It's a cultural touch. We know everything. Every, everyone, everyone knows what went on in, the, in, in, in uh, you know, Mozart, loot, loot Mo- music. Mozart. Tapestry. Let's just say Mozart came from then. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Mozart. Bach. Yeah. One of those dudes. Lost The lost colony of Roanoke. <laughs> the lo- yeah. Let's go into the holodeck and do our favorite thing. Reenact the lost colony of Roanoke. Oh, these guys. All it would take one of these guys is a half hour of just saying, hey, you know, we can make up our own thing. From the from like the late twenty first century that they could reenact, wouldn't that be fun? A reenactment of a thing that you don't recognize. Yeah, wouldn't that yeah. be exciting? Yeah. But now nah, let's just do a thing. That no, because that would that would create books. that would that that would break the fantasy that somehow four hundred years from now what we have made and what we know still matters in, at all. Mm-hmm. And that, you know that's that's that would be terrifying to to witness. For, to to, yeah. to see us to see a future where they aren't constantly dressing up as Sherlock Holmes that would be terrifying. Yeah, because they at that point, I mean, look the 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 reality of this is that it's a television show, and they're using props and sets from things from other right. stuff. Right. Yeah. That's the reality of it. They have they have head coats and. And pipes in the Paramount uh, wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> so they go get those. They don't have to go design a new costume that nobody's seen yet. Right. Go, please go over to Diagnosis Murder. Yeah. Borrow, <laughs> borrow some lab coats so that we can have them going back in time. See, that's what... What if Data, what if Data and Jordy LaForge were really into Diagnosis Murder? Or why, why was not... Why were they not doing, like, Seinfeld... Reenactments in Star Trek Into Darkness. That would have been pretty cool. Wouldn't that have been the greatest thing ever? They're just like, hey, let's watch this show from 400 years ago. 
Boom, 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 boom. Right? Yeah. That would have been that would have been good. And then they have Spock just going like, like uh, highly a lot. Like, it, this is funny. This is very amusing. I recognize this is humor. Yes. I have. <laughs> I've, I have noticed that airplane food is bad. The one they call Mickey. <laughs> the, the one they call Banya. He <laughs> seems quite annoying. <laughs> How are you, Tom? I'm okay. We have John Hodgman in the studio. Author, actor, mm. performer. Performer. <laughs> what else? What other titles do you have? And, and or. And or. You're you up there. Yeah. You got I got to fa- I I I'm 42 years old and it's time to face real reality. I know that I'm going to be forgotten like Sherlock Holmes in the 40, 24th century. <laughs> what if now just it's time to tell my story. Wrap your head around this. All right. You're watching Star Trek Into Darkness. Sure. Kirk and Spock are watching the Apple commercials. That's their favorite In some thing. ways, Captain, they remind me of us. It's not unlike the holodeck. <laughs> <laughs> it's not unlike the holodeck when it is not functioning. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing with Star Trek. People can also, when you watch the TV show, anything that is sparse, is you can probably count on was done for budgetary reasons after the fact. <laughs> What if we have them in a room with nothing in it? You know what that means? The previous episode cost way too much money, yeah. and they are in a <laughs> panic in how to, how to be able to afford to film this episode. Once again, we need, we need to have the characters exist solely in a conceptual void. <laughs> well, the, in the original one, when they're just like, no. hey, what if they go to the 20s? <laughs> all, all that means is, hey, what if... <laughs> what if instead of shooting somewhere where it costs money, we just walk outside of this this uh, studio onto the Paramount onto the lot? Paramount lot. Yeah, yeah. And we just go rent. Have you been to the, on the Paramount lot? Yes, I have been on. The so Paramount you've lot. seen their the their New York? <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. One of the best things I've ever had the privilege of doing. The television show I worked on shot on the Paramount lot. Yeah, I would. First thing I would do when I would come to Los Angeles, I would say to production, please make sure I have a golf cart. <laughs> and I would drive that thing so fast yeah. on the Paramount lot. It was the most fun ever to, t- to drive as fast as a golf cart will go. You tried to tip it? Through those lots. Yeah. I didn't try to tip it, but yeah. I just, you, just to gun it yeah. through those lots was like, it was like, pure oxygen (laughs) you on a golf cart booking it through fake new york on the paramount lot it was so much fun it's 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 like it's like an alternate timeline i am legend and you would drive by chevy chase would walk by sure because they would be shooting community that's right and all of a sudden you just go by oh there's chevy chase i almost hit chevy chase yeah did he try to stop you and make you watch a a jimmy cliff video why is that something he does (laughs) It it happened one time in my field of vision, where he he was cornering he was cornering various actors, <laughs> turning them on to Jimmy Cliff. You haven't heard you haven't heard uh, many rivers to cross. You, you got to listen to this. Ugh. It's a good it's a good song, and I would watch him I would watch him try to force this music on on people mm-hmm. on young people who. Unfortunately, have never heard many rivers to cross, and I kept saying to myself, "You know what? That is a beautiful song." I'm like, "Oh, I'm much closer to Chevy Chase than I am mm-hmm. to Donald Glover." Yes, but right. you, you also are not going to force. You're not going to say, "Hey, anybody, listen to this." You don't care. Yeah, I did. You did. What well, did you make? haven't listened to Rain Dogs? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, I have. <laughs> no, Tom, you, you really have to my, listen to Rain Dogs. Run you over Hang on, my I'm golf gonna, cart. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Rain Dogs up here for you. I'm gonna run you over my golf cart. It's like listening to a guy blindfolded in a kitchen. But I want to reboot, right? Uh, right. Hmm? Like a guy swinging a baseball bat in a kitchen blindfolded. <laughs> You're talking about the music of Tom Waits. Yeah. You and David. Right. Tom Waits was so important to me growing of up. He was. So important, important to a lot of people. To me, and then you, 
you and David Reese took the Tom Waits habit yeah. right out of me, mm -hmm. threw it out into the street, yep. and kicked it to death. Yes, we did. And now I can't listen <laughs> to it. <laughs> right? It's like a d think about Tatiano it. Tatiano has been drinking. It's a, it's a, the guy's putting on a persona. I understand that now. He didn't sound like that at one. He recorded a couple albums that he didn't sing like that. I know. And then one day, he decided... He grew as an artist, I think is what you mean to say. To, he decided to ride the rails. Oh. Right? Right. That dude wouldn't last five minutes on the rails. What if, what right? if, what if Tom... Like, train you know what, you know what I'm... But you know what I'm... Gave I'm, his head in with that's, his that's true. billy club. The, bull, the bulls would get would catch him up, <clears throat> right? but, but quick. That's yeah. true. Yeah. What but are you I, guys doing? <laughs> you guys, uh... Eaten? He'd eat one bad train yard meal, and then he would leave. Oh. And then he, all of a sudden he'd be like, I, I, I think I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go back to my house in Venice. <laughs> I'm going to go act in a Francis Ford Coppola yeah. movie now. This isn't fun. Yeah, you know, but I like I I still love I still love him. He was very important to me, and now I'm all I can do is imagine Tom Waits turns out is like a regular listener to this show. I would love it, and he's listening right now, and he's yeah. and he's crying tears made of broken glass. <laughs> I would love it if he if he was listening. <laughs> my two goals in my yeah, career, I have a problem with some of the things you've been saying. That guy going like, what? He doesn't like me. Like he now, wait a minute. Now he's doing bad. Now he's doing bad. Pete, that's not Tom Waits. What if he was doing uh what about a movie with Tom Waits, Seth Rogen? Oh. Right? Right. Hey, what's going on? It would be great if hey, I don't know. You <laughs> tell me. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, we're uh What if they got handcuffed together? Tom Waits. Tom and Waits Seth Rogen. is Seth Rogen's dad. Yeah. I'm back, son. In a, in a remake of the yeah. Defiant ones. Yeah. I'm back. Hey, well, it took you long enough. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> <laughs> what if the guys in Star Trek were all into like the tw 20th century culture, but like l like late seventies, early eighties, twentieth century culture? Do you like, know what I mean? Like they're really into Fran Leibowitz. <laughs> 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 like New York late seventies. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like they'd be reading like Interview magazine. It to yeah, exactly. <laughs> A computer. Bring up, bring up the issue of, uh, bring up the in, the David Bowie interview in Interview Magazine. <laughs> I would like to review the designs of Tibor Kalman.